won't weep. Christ in my life, now my life won't flee. Christ in your life, enemies will flee. Grace in your love, yeah, that's all I need. God give me strength when I feel so weak. Christ in my life, now my life won't flee. Christ in your life, enemies will flee. Grace in your love, yeah, that's all I need. Ah, you don't need to stress no more. God is on your side every day, and of this I'm sure. You ain't gotta cry no more. God will wipe your tears and believe that your breakthrough's here. Never let you go, he's near. I pray my whole team goes clear. Team goes clear. Help us choose faith over fear. Help us choose faith over fear. I know you feel tired. All the lonely nights you cried. Please know that God is on your side with the Lord I ride. Ride in the passenger side. Christ or the world you decide. Never die because of pride. Stress anytime we backslide. Grind to the whole fam right. The whole fam right. Mom, don't cry cause you tried. Mom, don't cry cause you tried. Cause you tried. God give me strength when I feel so weak. Christ in my life, now my life won't flee. Christ in your life, enemies will flee. Grace in your love, yeah, that's all I need. God give me strength when I feel so weak. Christ in my life, now my life won't flee. Christ in your life, enemies will flee. Grace in your love, yeah, that's all I need. Yo, and you will never fail, no way. We don't need to stress anymore, all we do is pray. And Lord, we need you every day. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And help us never lose our faith. I know we won't abuse your grace. Uh, God's with you, don't lose faith. God's with you, don't lose faith. God give me strength when I feel so weak. Christ in my life, now my life won't flee.
promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never. lovely to see you. My name is Anna. Um, I'm one of the leaders here at St. Margaret's and you are really welcome. If you're new, then you are particularly welcome and it is great to see you. Um, we have a wonderful man on welcome this evening called Alan. Where's Alan gone? Oh, he's so welcoming that he's still out there welcoming people. But um, if you would like to know more about us as a church or just would like to ask any questions about St. Margaret's, then Alan is your man and he'll be on the door at the end. Um, we're going to have some donuts and hot chocolate after the service um, and fire pits tonight. So if you want to stay around for a hot chocolate and fire pit, then you'd be really welcome and it'll be lovely to get to know you a little bit better. But we are here, yes, to gather with one another, but also to meet with the living God, and um, we come with expectation, don't we, this evening, that we are going to meet with God, that God wants to do business with us tonight, and that his heart is towards us, that his heart is keen to meet with us, and that he is, um, his posture is one of love um, towards us. And so we are going to, in that vein, we are going to worship, we're going to come before God with everything that we are, all of our mess our whole lives, and we're going to uh, bring ourselves to God in worship. So why don't you stand if you're able and comfortable? David is leading the band tonight, which is an absolute honor. Hi, David. <laughs> so why don't you do whatever you need to do to get yourself in that position where you are before God? And if this is new to you, then you might just want to um, put your hands out as a just sign of, I am open, Lord. Let's just get your body, your mind, your soul in that place where you're ready to worship God. Because I know that he wants to meet with you tonight. Come Holy Spirit. We pray that ancient prayer. Come Holy Spirit. Amen.
save my soul. You save my soul. Thank you, God, for what you've done. Oh, thank you for the true story of the cross. Thank you for the true story of the cross.
Yeah, we believe, God, that what the Bible says about you is true. We believe what is written about you, that you are faithful to your word. Everything that is written about you is true, that you can't break your word. You can't go back on your promises. You can't be unfaithful because that would be against your nature, God. 
it's impossible for you to be unfaithful to us. So if you've come here tonight and um, you're waiting on a promise from the Lord, or there's something that you are just bringing before God tonight where you're desperate, you're desperate to see Him move, I want to encourage you to maybe either rise, raise a hand or um, put out your hands in front of you as just a sign to say, yes, I'm here. That's me. I need God tonight. And I'm just going to ask the band just to sing over you. That's that line again, that he is faithful. That he is true to his promises. And, and as they sing this over you, receive this. Receive this as the truth. So yeah, just uh, you might want to just raise a hand, put out your hands, whatever, as just a sign to God and, and let these words minister to you as the band sing. bring before you everything that um, that we're carrying tonight. We bring you all of those things that we've just brought before you, Lord. We trust into you. We trust into your goodness. We trust into your love. continue our worship by sharing God's stories with one another. So um, this is just an opportunity to turn to, to somebody next to you um, or a couple of people around you and to share stories of where you see God at work. Where have you seen God at work this week? Um, it can be teeny tiny. Um, any God story is an encouragement where you just notice that God has done something in your life this week that's an encouragement. Um, so do just turn to anybody around you for a few minutes and just share some God's stories. It would be wonderful to hear one or two stories. So if anybody would like to um, and feels able to come and share a story that would encourage the rest of us, that would be great. Any God stories to tell? 
do come on up. Let's give Eloise a round of applause. Come on. Great jacket. Thank you. Yeah, so we've just been praying that we'll meet some students during freshers. And today we met six students. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to go for a coffee with them and meet them soon. Come on. Let's give a round of applause. That's awesome. Any other good stories of where God's been at work this week? Yes, Jonah. Let's give him a round of applause as he comes up. <laughs> what an entrance. <laughs> I know, you've got to at least look good. Um, <laughs> well, mine's a bit embarrassing, really. Basically, long story short, I was carrying some cash with me the other day. And uh, I thought I'd do this because I thought when I buy stuff, it will make it feel like I'm actually spending money if I have to hand money over. So I had this cash in my pocket. It was like 100 quid. I don't have that much money. I don't know why I had that much in my pocket. Anyway, <laughs> long story short, I'm walking into H&M, and this money, like, falls out of my pocket, and I don't realize. And I, like, carry on shopping for, like, 45 minutes, and I get to John Lewis, um, because i got a new Hoover. It's really good if you want a recommendation. <laughs> I can give you one. Um, and then I, like, when I'm in John Lewis, I'm like, oh, no, I haven't got this money. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I can't tell anyone. I'm definitely not texting my wife because she's going to go mad because I've like lost 100 quid just in town. And I'm going through my head and I'm like, okay, I can pray about it and I can just like hopefully go to these shops. And, um, and I went to like six shops that I'd been in and it wasn't there. And everyone there was like, mate, why are you even looking? It's gone. It's gone. It's, it's not there. And I was like, well, you know, if someone else has got it, they'll be better off. I was trying to think you know, positively. <laughs> anyway, I'll, uh, I get to get back, get back to H&M and I'm like, I'm praying hard and I'm like, this is the last shot. This is it. If it's not here, it's gone. And I, I get up to the counter and they're like, I'm like, oh, you know, I've dropped some money. And they're like, oh yeah, we've got your money. Don't you worry about it. And I, oh. so I'm like, okay, this is great. I get, and I see the CCTV and this money like falls out of my pocket and it hits the air conditioning. And like goes up in the air. It's like everywhere. It's mad. It's like confetti. And you hadn't noticed. I hadn't noticed at wow. all. And I'm just like walking around, like minding That's my own amazing. business. That's um, amazing. And anyway, and then I'm giving this lady. She comes up to me, gives money, and I'm like, wow. And she's like, you're so lucky. And I was like, yeah, I know. I was praying about it. I was like, I believe in God, but God's really done something. And she's like, yeah, that was definitely God. And I was like, yeah, it was God. It was God. Wow, that's so good. That's so good. I find sharing God's story so encouraging because it's just a reminder that God is at work. No matter what kind of week we've had, God is at work. God is always doing stuff. Um, great. Let's share a few notices now. So uh, lots going on in St. Margaret's September, um, fresh start, lots going on to tell you about. Um, but the main thing to let you know is that on Monday, we're starting our new Woven in Prayer monthly. So this is a chance where everybody from across Woven churches gets together and praise. Praise for the life of Woven and um, praise for one another. There's a time of worship um, and it's a really encouraging time where the wider um, kind of church of churches comes together. Kicks off tomorrow night, 7.30 and this time it's at St. Leo's. So it's St. Leo's turn to host. That is the schedule for, oh my word, are we going all the way up to August 2022? That is so organized, the Rich Atkinson, well done Rich. Wow, 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 you can't say that we don't communicate, that's really good. And you'll see that the December one has mulled wine and mince pies. Wow. So you'll see that St. Margaret's turn is in November. Um, so yeah, do come along to those. It's only once a month, so you can really commit. Um, and it starts off tomorrow night. Um, I think that's everything to let you know about, actually. Is that everything to let you know about? Great. Cool. So I'm going to hand over to Rich now. We are in a three-week sermon series, um, kicking off the vision of, of the church. And if you were here last week, we talked about um, loving Aspley, Nottingham and beyond as our, our kind of mission statement as a church. And Rich tonight is going to delve into the vision of Woven, which is our wider kind of church of churches. Wow. I'm going to hand over to you now. I really enjoyed Anna's reaction to that. I mean, it was sort of chilled as well. It was like, hmm. yeah, the whole thing's just exploding. I'm just going to grab this. Um, 
take a minute to chat amongst yourselves while I will this in. It's, uh, it's lovely to see you all tonight. Hello. I mean, you warmed up after I looked at you in a kind of cross voice. Cross voice? That's not such a... How do you look in a cross voice? Weird. Um, as Anna said, we're continuing a little... We're doing a little run on um, vision. And um, uh, last week we looked at, at St. Margaret's vision here. And for those that were here, uh, blessing Aspie Nottingham and beyond, as Anna said, uh, which I feel really excited about, but I'm also really excited about Woven and um, our, our sort of joint connected um, sense of vision together, which I'm going to speak into a little bit together, a uh, little bit this evening. And you may be thinking, goodness me, a little bit too much vision, like calm down. Or maybe you're new and you're thinking, what the chaff is woven? Um, any of those things are absolutely fine. Um, don't worry, I will explain a little bit. But vision, vision is so important for us, I think. You know, Proverbs, Proverbs 29, 18 says, without vision, the people perish. And I genuinely think you do start to perish without a sense of what is God calling us to? You know, what's our kind of faith stretch? What's the kind of hope that God is calling us into? What's he, what's he drawing? What, where's he daring us to believe? And, um, and I hope as I go through some of this tonight, I mean, some of it is a little bit kind of strategic. Uh, apologies for getting into some of that. But I want to make sure we're sharing everything that God is, is stirring us to, partly so, so that you can hold me accountable for the things that we feel like God's asking us to do. We shared this with the PCC. For those that have no idea what a PCC, that's like the trustees um, of, of a charity. They, they're kind of the, the governing body that keep us accountable. But I also want to share it with you because I want you to hold us accountable to things that God is calling us to do. Um, because we need to keep moving towards where God is speaking. Um, and if you have a sense of God speaking, of, of what God's saying, whether it's for yourself, for a service, for a church, for woven as a whole, um, speak it. Tell us. Tell us what you feel like God um, is saying. You know, I've been passionate about vision for a long time, but um, really ever since I was a kid, when I was a, a teenager, I'd grown up in a church all my life. You know, my parents, they were kind of like uh, church planters. They helped plant a little church in our village. Wonderful place, loved it. And, uh, and you know, I, to be honest, all the people there, I was like the good golden Christian boy. You know, I showed up on time for church every Sunday. I played my guitar. I was trying to be like David, you know, singing my guitar songs. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I was kind of, you know, I knew all the right answers to the Bible study questions, all of that kind of stuff. You know, I was kind of all that. Um, but I also, I, what they didn't know in church, so I lived a completely double life. I'd go into school the next morning and nobody had a clue I was a Christian. In fact, I was completely embarrassed. You know, if people asked what they, you were doing at the weekend, I'd, I'd major on Saturday. Um, and, and then if they really pushed on Sunday, I might mention lunch or, or, or something like that, but definitely not church. You know, I'd stay well clear of that, keep it completely out. And, um, uh, and me and my mates, as, as we got a little bit older in the kind of teenage years, we kind of got into drinking and partying and doing all sorts of stuff that we probably uh, definitely shouldn't have been doing, what with it being illegal and all that. Um, you know, we shouldn't have been doing all sorts of things. And we got into all this stuff and I got into it with all my mates and we were doing all sorts of not particularly brilliant things. And um, to be really honest with you, I didn't really see a problem with it. I was, I was pretty chilled about it. I was like, yeah, whatever. This is working pretty well for me, this double life thing. You know, I've got this life, I've got this life. They're both great. And, uh, and so I just sort of carried on living this kind of totally, completely double life uh, until one fateful morning where I, um, I went to a, a party the night before with my mates and um, uh, drank way too much. I mean, way, 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 way too much. And uh, I got home and uh, to cut a long story short, passed out on my parents' bathroom floor. Um, and slept there all night. I didn't, I don't know, didn't really remember terribly much of what happened. I actually couldn't remember even now how I got home that night. You know, all of that kind of stuff passed out on my parents' bathroom floor. And, uh, and I woke up the next morning and, uh, and suddenly had this realization, feeling not particularly brilliant, as you can imagine. I suddenly realized, oh my goodness, it's Sunday and I'm supposed to be leading worship this morning. This is not great. And it's like suddenly these two worlds kind of collided and crashed. I had this moment of feeling just awful, sat there on the bathroom floor. And then what happened next has only happened to me a couple of times in my whole life. But 
in that moment, I heard an audible voice from God. Now, it doesn't, that's not regular. If, if you're still exploring faith, very rarely does God speak in an audible voice. In fact, I've met, not met many other people who have heard an audible voice from God. It happens sometimes in the Bible. One or two, I've met a few other people who have heard an audible voice from God. And uh, there's just twice in my life I have. And this was one of them. When I was 16 years old, woken up, hangover on my parents' bathroom floor, couldn't remember how on earth I got home. And in that moment, God spoke to me. And he said to me this, One of these lives has a future. You decide. Now, that may sound pretty harsh. You're like, chill out, God. I mean, that's not a particularly nice thing to say to him. Poor guy. Not feeling well on the bathroom floor. But actually, in that moment, it was just the perfect thing for God to say to me. You see, in that moment, I knew. I knew what it was I wanted. I suddenly had a vision for my life. I suddenly had a bit of hope. I knew that this life that I was living for Jesus actually could be everything. It could transform every part of my life. It could impact what I was like at school. It could impact what I was like with my mates. It could impact what I was like in a party. I suddenly had this sense of vision for my life. And so literally, I kid you not, I mean, I, I, I sort of pretty hungover, managed to get it through worship that next day. And then Monday morning, went into school and announced to my friends, friends, I am a Christian. Now, I'm, what's wrong with you? I mean, you really did drink a lot the other night. And I said, I'm not going to drink again until I'm 18 and I'm old enough. And so I quit drink, drinking that day. And, and um, uh, so a lot of the time, still went to the parties, but went to the parties and prayed for my mates, you know, when they were kind of had a bit too much to drink and started to share their lives and, and, and lived this different life for the last little bit of my time at school. And God moved powerfully. Now, the reason I share that is because tonight we're looking at vision and, and without vision, the people perish. You see, in some ways, I didn't have a vision even for my life in that moment and I was perishing. I was perishing because I hadn't had a sense of what is it that God is calling me to. And, and I, I hope tonight we're going to look a really big, big picture of vision for Woven. Like what is it we're called to as Woven? I'm going to explain what Woven is in just a moment. For those of you that are still in that, I still don't know what that is, phase. But, um, but also there might be a bit of a sense of vision for your life. Maybe God just wants to recapture you for what his vision for your life is this evening. Maybe he just wants to reconnect you with what his hope is for you. Just take a moment just to look into the vision of Woven. As I said to you, I wanted to just explain briefly what Woven is. Apologies for those that know this really, really well. But Woven is a bunch of churches here in this northwest part of the city of which I'm the team leader of. We have a team that work together across these different churches. And it all came about not out of some great idea that I had or, or, or just out of sort of practicality. It actually came out of a vision that God stood the Bishop of, of Sutherland and Nottingham with. Now, you see, a a few years ago, they were kind of praying around some of the churches around the northwest of this city, many of them struggling a little bit, not doing terribly well. And and the bishop came and some other people came to pray. And one of the things they're asking themselves is, which of these churches should we shut? You know, maybe, maybe, maybe some of them have had their day and it's time to sort of finish it. And, you know, we sort of should, you know, the, the sensible thing would be to shut a bunch and, and sort of, you know, retreat a little bit back into one or two others where there's a bit of strength and, and try and hope for the best. And as the bishop went around all these churches in the northwest of the city with this little team and they were looking at stuff, he, he, he'd go to each one and he kept, sort of went there and then thought, well, should we shut this one? No, it just doesn't feel right. It feels like this is a great church and God could do something here. And okay, let's go on to the next one. And, uh, and they looked at it and, and thought, no, no, we can't shut this church. I mean, this could be such a beacon of light for this community. We should surely do something here. And, and, and time and time again, looked at all these churches and thought, no, we, it, it can't be over. And so really the vision of Woven came way before me, it came then, to actually join together some of these churches in this northwest part of Nottingham and say actually let's link them together, let's work together in a way that actually the Church of England hasn't really done before, we're still figuring out how it works, and and, and let's work together to see these churches re-flourishing. And so the churches that are in Woven, this is one of them at St. Margaret's, um, uh, but also, if you want to put my PowerPoint up, Lizzie, that'd be amazing. Um, I've got some pictures of them for you. So we've got All Saints Strelly. This is a picture of All Saints Strelly. It's a village church um, supported by some of the readers and leaders from this church. You go up. Um, Alan, who you may have met on the door, goes up there sometimes and preaches. Sorry to All Saints Strelly about that. Uh, but no, apologies. I'm joking. <laughs> 
Uh, but, you know, we, we, we kind of, we're trying to support that church for what God is doing. Actually, John and I were talking, you know, actually we're starting to get a sense of actually them looking out and thinking what the future is for that church. So there's All Saints Australia. There's St. Martin's Bilbra. Um, pop that up there. St. Martin's Bilbra with a, with a lovely Christian rainbow over it. I like that picture. And, uh, you know, but, but God's starting to really move there. It's amazing. They've got this new sense of vision. They've just opened a community cafe and people are, people are coming in from the locality. They're meeting people um, and they've got a, a vision in October to start a new worshipping community there aimed at families. They're all older people, but together as a church, they've got this hope, this, this maybe we could serve families on our doorstep in this estate. And so they're opening that um, in October, led by um, a, a couple of people there, uh, Denise and Jess, who are clergy there. And, uh, and then St. John's, can I have a whoop for St. John's? There's some St. John's people here. There we go. They're always gobby from St. John's. <laughs> Um, we reopened Woven St. John's. St. John's was one of those churches where they were going, well, maybe we should shut it. And um, it got very, very small, and actually the doors had been shut, the services stopped, there wasn't anything going on. And, um, uh, and uh, then we reopened, this is, this is a picture from, from the day we reopened St. John's. And Peter Shaw, Reverend Peter Shaw taking a lead there. This was the day we reopened, you could see the church was packed, it was amazing. And, but what's more amazing than that is what God's been doing since then. He's been building his church there. It's remarkable. I love going up to St. John's. You know, you put, I pull in in my car, look around and think, oh my goodness, no one's coming to church today because there's no cars around. Uh, and then you walk in through the door and the church is packed with people because they've all just walked there. It's a really local church making a, a massive difference in a locality. And just so, I mean, there's, I could go on and on about all that God's doing, like the amazing things um, up at St. John's. And then uh, we've got St. Aidan's. This is a picture of St. Aidan's. Um, they're they're kind of newer into Woven. They've been doing this community cafe and uh, meal service to, to their local community, reaching out into that locality and, uh, and starting to work out what else, what else can we do? And they've got a vision to do Alpha, um, I've just discovered, really exciting, they're going to do an Alpha course um, out of St. Aidan's and, uh, and led by Jo Harley, who used to be a reader here, she was a reader here, we blessed her off, she had a sense to go and has gone to take a lead um, over in uh, Woven St. Aidan's, that's St. Aidan's and then St. Leo's, can I have a whoop St. Leo's? No, I said whoop. Goodness. It's good to see you listening, Megan. Uh, <laughs> uh, St. Again, St. Leo's. A, a, a smaller church, and, and, and we closed the church for a little while and reopened it on Easter Day, um, just Easter Day just gone. And, and it's been remarkable what God's done. This is a photo uh, from their gardens, and it's just incredible. All that God is doing in that place is God's growing the church. You know, I was chatting to Lydia the other day, and she said, to her, there's someone new every single week. Every single week, someone new comes to church. And isn't that wonderful? It, this church that the enemy thought it'd beaten. Uh, God is at work. It's wonderful what's going on at Woven St. Leo's. And then um, Woven St. Martha's, uh, the last one, our, our sixth other church, um, uh, it, it's just incredible new life going on at Woven St. Martha's up in Broxtow. Peter Huxtable, who was actually, Peter Huxtable was the area dean for this area. For the, those that don't know how the Church of England works, me neither. But he's, there's this thing called an area dean that kind of oversee a bunch of, uh, bunch of churches. Anyway, he was part of the original group that went round with the bishop praying around all these churches. And he rang me up one day and area deans are sort of like, you know, they're, they're sort of like the boss of, of vicars, you know. And, uh, and so he rang me up and said, I want to chat to you. And, um, and I thought, oh, no, what have I done wrong this time? You know, I'm in trouble. And, uh, and, and then Peter said, uh, got on the Skype call, and I was kind of nervous. Not Skype. They don't do that anymore, do they? Zoom, that's it. Got on the Zoom call, I was kind of nervous. And then Peter said to me, um, Rich, I feel like God's calling me to join the team. And I was like, what team? He was like, your team. I felt like God's calling me to come join Woven and to get stuck in. I want to go to St. Martha's. And he was doing an amazing job in another church, a really flourishing church um, in the diocese. And felt like God, no, God's calling him to come to Woven St. Martha's. And, and ever since he's been there, new life is coming, new people are coming. And uh, it, it, I was up there just the other day at a prayer meeting. A bunch of people uh, came along just to pray and pray for all that God is doing um, in that location. So that's St. Martha's. And so that's the sixth church. Se seventh church is us here at Woven St. Margaret's, pop the next side up, and um, there it is, there's Lizzie being enthused about something or other, 
um, woven St. Mar Margaret's here, and, um, and we've been on a journey trying to work out what it is that God's calling us to, and uh, uh, we're called to be a resourcing church, like a key part of this whole movement of what God's doing across woven, uh, blessing Aspie, Nottingham, and beyond. That's our new strapline that we talked about the other day, our sense of vision. And, um, and as a senior leadership team of Woven, so that, that group of churches I just mentioned, uh, we've, been, we've been asking ourselves, okay, it feels like it's time to start really nailing down what it is we're called to as Woven, what this whole thing is about. You know, we, we've all got the same logo, we've got, we, we, we work together across, we've got some shared leadership, we've developed a, a senior leadership team, which is, is Peter Shaw, heads up from St. John's, and Peter Huxtable from St. Martha's, and, and Lydia, who's at St. Leo's, and myself, and Pippa. Um, Carter, who oversees just a bunch of our ministries, kids and youth and um, love your neighbor and all of that kind of stuff. And so we've, we've been wrestling together. What does it mean for us to be part of Woven? How do we, how do we sum ourselves up? What should our strap lines be? And I can tell you, we, we literally battled with this for ages, trying to get a sense of, of what we're called to. You pop the next slide up. And this is what we came up with. We came up with, we are a church of churches, united in its vision of pursuing and proclaiming real and eternal life. We're a church of churches. Let me just dig into that for one second. What, what, what do we mean? Well, woven is a church of churches. You see, what we didn't want to be is just some sort of loose network or a group or we're kind of like vaguely friends but don't really like each other or any of that kind of stuff. We, we want to be a church of churches. As in we want woven to be a church. We want to work together as a church with a shared vision, a shared leadership, a sense of, of loving one another, moving together forwards, a, a sense of working together, collaborating, impacting our neck of the woods as best we can together. We're a church but we're also a church of churches. Each one of those different churches that I flashed up to you, they, they look a little bit different. They've got a different sense of, of where God's working, how God's calling them to live it out. You know, I've often said worth, uh, woven is not about a worship style. If you go to some of these other churches, you will not get a worship style like we've got at the 6 p.m. here. And that's good. I, I keep going around places saying, please don't copy St. Margaret's. Please don't be like us. Please be what God is calling you to be. And let's work together in our difference and our diversity. You know, woven is about diversity. It, it, you know, I can guarantee you this. If you're looking for a church, you can find your kind of church here uh, across woven because we've got all sorts of diversity across these different churches. We're a church of churches, but we want to be united in our vision. And our vision is this, pursuing and proclaiming real and eternal life. Let me just take a moment to unpack that just briefly. Pursuing and proclaiming real and eternal life. It might sound like a bit of a mouthful, but I'd love you to try and get that into your minds because this is what we want to go for. Pursuing and proclaiming real and eternal life. In John 10, 10, Jesus says he came to give us life to the full. Let me read out the full verse, actually. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And I, you know, I believe the enemy is, is everywhere trying to come and steal, kill, and destroy. You don't have to turn on the news. You don't have to look at some of the stuff in our lives to see the enemy attempting to steal and kill and destroy. What is Jesus come for? He came to give you life and life to the full. Real and eternal life. Real life now, not waiting to the future, but also, yes, forever with him. This real life he is uh, putting out before us. And we wanted a sense of us going after that together, pursuing it. Because actually what we're called to be is disciples of Jesus, aren't we? We're called to be disciples on an adventure with Jesus. Now that means we can't stand still, however old you are. If you're here tonight and you've been following Jesus for a really, really long time, you can still pursue real and eternal life. There's still more available for you. God has a vision for your life which is bigger than the vision you could ever imagine. Or maybe you're younger tonight. Or maybe you're not even sure about God tonight. You're sat and you think, well, how could God have a vision for me? God has a vision for you. God has a vision for your life. He has an inviting you this evening to go pursue the vision that God is laying out for you. He's got a pathway for you, a plan for you. And it's our joy across Woven to together cheer each other on to pursue with everything we've got all that Jesus has for us. Because he's got a lot. He's got a lot for you and for me pursue real and eternal life but we also want to proclaim it the great commission in the great commission jesus sends them out at a point where you almost imagine he probably shouldn't matthew 28 um says this when they saw him they worshiped him it's just at the very end of matthew's gospel 
Uh, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We're called to proclaim it. You and I haven't just been given this gift from God to go, well, thank you very much. Cheers. I'll keep that to myself, keep that under my hat. God's calling us to proclaim it. You know, maybe you're here this evening, you're starting uni or you're at uni or you're in a workplace or you're at school or, or, or you've got mates who live around the corner from you. You know, sometimes I don't even have these moments. Sometimes I feel like God literally breaks my heart for people that are around me. I think they just, they haven't realized real life is available for them and it's not in all the things they're look, chasing after. They're chasing after things, they're pursuing stuff, but they're not pursuing real life. It's not bringing them life, it's not, it's not bringing actual real life. The, light, the kind of life that Jesus brings when he brings life into you, gives you life. We're called to proclaim it with all we've got. So that's what we want to do. We want to be a church of churches united in chasing after everything that Jesus has got, pursuing real and eternal life, and telling anybody with ears to hear that this life is not just for us. This real and eternal life is for everybody. That's why Jesus came. That's our vision. Pursuing and proclaiming real and eternal life. Now, I just want to whip through, and I'm going to do this super fast, because I know it took a little while over that. I want to do this super fast. Go through five priorities that we've been, we've been wrestling about and asking God, how do, how do we do this? How do we step into this? So here's our five priorities. Um, priority one, we want to grow disciples and raise leaders. We want to grow disciples and raise leaders. If you, if you join this church, if you're part of this church, you don't feel like you're growing as a disciple, come talk to me about it. Because that is what we've got to be about. We've got to be growing as disciples. But we've also got to be raising leaders. We've also got to be raising leaders. You know, I have this fundamental belief that every single one of us has a part to play, has something that God is calling us to do, a thing that God is calling us to step into, a gifting that God has placed into you. And, and, and to be honest, it's, it's our job, it's our job to call that out, to call out everything that God has put in you. We've got to be great at growing and raising, growing disciples and raising leaders. So we're going to go after that in these next few years across Woven, making resources, working together to figure out how do we do that really well. In some ways, the art of disciple making feels lost. And in some ways, we, we feel like we haven't worked out quite really how to raise leaders brilliantly. And so we're going to do some work on that. And, and one of the things we're looking at um, is the fivefold ministry as a tool for that. The different giftings mentioned in Ephesians chapter 4. And if you want to find out more about that, I've recorded a little talk about it. I did up at Woven St. John's. Um, it's on our website, wearewoven.church. If you go to the Get Involved tab and, and the drop down on there, it says Fivefold Ministry. You can watch a little talk I give about the fivefold ministry that gives a little intro to that. Because um, we're going to be talking about that a whole lot more over the next um, few years. So do, um, do have a look at that if you want to find out more about it. So growing disciples, raising leaders. Um, priority number two. We want to see life transformed in our community and play our part in the story. We, we, I'll say that again. We want to see lives transformed, life transformed in our communities. Our communities of Aspley, it's where we are right now, of, of Bilbra, of, of Strelly, of, of Broxtow, of Baysford, but of Nottingham, uh, of our diocese, of our region, of our nation, uh, of our continent, of our world. You know, actually, we want to see communities transformed now we can't do that but we can play our part in all that God calls us to do and we believe he's going to change communities now I, I really believe it I believe he's going to change communities he already is starting to move God's doing stuff and we want to play our part in that story priority number three churches are woven together in love each knowing its missional identity um, uh, and I put this down because it feels so important to me that we're not just woven together pragmatically you know, we don't just want a bunch of churches that, that, you know, pay lip service to getting along because it means they might get some more resources, you know, or they might get a bit more time of some staff member. We want to be woven together because God has called us and we want to be woven together in love. We want to learn to love one another from across different churches. And so if, if you're part of one of the woven churches, you know, get used to, to reaching out in love 
to other people in different woven churches. Um, but we want every church to live out its missional identity. Now, I've put this down here partly so that you guys can hold me accountable to what I'm doing with my time. You know, I'm not always here at St. Margaret's. I'm sometimes off at different churches. And, and what I'm trying to do is orientate my time around aiding and helping all of our local churches discover their own missional identity. Um, and it's a big part of what I want to spend my time doing. Priority four, um, our home is in Northwest Nottingham, but we embrace our calling is broader than this. We've got a particular home in this neck of the woods. We love it and we want to serve our communities. But we're also aware that sometimes God is calling us to give away broader than that. We've been working with the diocese, for example, on children's and youth ministry and how we can serve churches even beyond woven um, uh, with, with some of the stuff that God's been teaching us about that. And we, so we want to play our part in that. We don't want to say, no, we're only going to do stuff here. And also we don't just want to be a church which is like, you've got to live right here to become. I mean, people come uh, particularly here to St. Margaret's who live all over the city and beyond. And then we've got people who drive down the motorway to come be part of us. And everybody is welcome to come be part of the adventure because our home is here. But our calling is broader than that. And our final priority is this. Um, we want to build broader networks for external funding and partnerships to aid our long-term viability. And, um, and that's important because God has been doing incredible things, particularly with our kids' ministry, our youth ministry, as I mentioned earlier, and our, our Love Your Neighbor social action ministries. Now, it, it may surprise you to know that the youth aren't giving humongous tithes at this particular moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've got faith for that, haven't we, Jonah? It's coming. But, um, but, but you know, it's going to cost us money to step into all that God's called us to. It's going to cost us. And, and we're going to all give sacrificially. I know that people in this church and across all woven churches, I know, give sacrificially um, already into all that God's doing. But we also know we're going to have to build some broader networks and, um, uh, in order to fund and invest in everything that's going on. Um, because I think it's really significant and I think it's fundable uh, and we want people to pour into this part of the city and I believe they will. So, so some of what I'm going to be working on is building those broader networks. Um, so to finish, there are five priorities. I'd love you to be praying um, for us as we try and do that, but also every single one of you has a part to play. And, uh, but the main part you have to play is in hearing what God is calling you to as a disciple of Jesus and pursuing it with all your might. Pursuing it with everything you've got. Jesus has a plan and a purpose for your life. He is ushering, he's calling you into it. And the main thing you can do to serve the woven vision is to say yes to Jesus and go for it with all your might. To serve him with all your heart. And so I'd love us to pray tonight for that. So why don't you stand with me? Let's have the band up. I don't know why I always say let's have the band up and then look behind me like they're there. They're obviously not there because I've just asked them up. But anyway, um, uh, let's, um, and let's take a moment just to respond together um, and ask God to come and meet us. You may want to put your hands up before God. I'm just going to invite the Holy Spirit to come to fill us and to lead us into all he's got. So let's invite God to come and meet us now. We say, God, come, Holy Spirit. Come and fill this place. Lord, I know we've, I, I've sort of done a 10,000 feet tonight and looked at great big vision. And talked about priorities and all sorts of stuff. But Lord, actually, there's a simplicity tonight which says we just want to pursue you. We want to pursue, we want to chase after that real and eternal life that you give us. The real life you lay before us. We want to step into all you've got for us. So just take a moment and just do some business with God tonight. Allow him to start speaking to you. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. There's a couple of people I'd love us to pray for tonight. One is, I'd love to pray for you if you just like, yes, I want to go for it. I want to play my part. Maybe you're already playing your part, but you'd just almost love to be prayed for, to be commissioned tonight. We've not really done much prayer ministry and we haven't really thought this through, but I feel like we should do some tonight. So if you'd like prayer to say, I, yes, I want to pr play my part, what I'd love you to do is, is just come over to my right down here. As we will sing a song in a minute, while we're singing, just come down to this right-hand side 
and Anna and I will sort out prayer ministry. Is that okay, Anna? We'll sort out some, we, we, we just want to pray. You know, we can't do this, can we? We need the spirit to come in power. And so if you'd love to be empowered for whatever it is that God's stirring in you, come down here in a minute during the next song and we will pray for you. Um, don't worry, we won't lay hands on you unless you are comfortable with it. But we would love to pray for you tonight. The second thing that I feel really strongly we should pray for tonight is, I wonder if there's some of us here tonight who don't feel good enough, who are like, oh, I, yeah, I should, I should run after everything that Jesus, and maybe you can just think of all the ways you haven't run after Jesus, or maybe my story about living a, a, a double life really is, you're like, goodness, that's me, and I don't know how to get out, and I feel rubbish, and actually, you've almost just been feeling rubbish tonight. Um, actually, I, my sense is God wants to meet you just as you are. He doesn't even want to change you yet. He just wants to meet you as you are. He wants you to know tonight how much he accepts and loves you. And he wants to start there. He wants to start right there with you. He doesn't, he, he's not even going to tell you how he's going to change. He'll do all that stuff. But I believe God wants to meet some people tonight and just affirm them and let them know that they are loved. And so again, as we sing this next song, if that's you, I'd love you to come down to my right, down here, down to your left. And, uh, and we'll arrange some people to pray for you tonight. So let's, um, let's worship. And, um, and as we worship, as we come towards God in worship, let's respond. And, uh, and it may even be there's just, you just, you're like, actually those two things don't apply to me, but I haven't been prayed for for ages and I'd love some prayer ministry. If that's you, come, 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 come get prayed for tonight. God changes stuff when we pray. God changes things when we pray. So if you'd like to be prayed for um, during this next song, make your way down here and we'll get some people to pray for you. And then let's worship, guys.
praying earlier I just felt that God was saying would you allow me to take you into my garden of desire and by being in my garden of desire will you allow me to tend you will you allow me to grow you to water you and to feed you this is where I am placing you in my garden of design and from there we will go on together together we will grow So we are going to um, finish now with a song together. Um, do you come and grab us. We'll still be over there if you want prayer. Um, we're going to, after the service, we're going to have fire pit. We'll start lighting the fire pits now, actually. And we'll have drinks and refreshments. And we'd love you to, to stay around. Uh, if you're a student, then we'd love to get to know you. Uh, we have our student pastor, Emma's here, and she'd love to chat with you. Um, but do stay around. But yeah. Let me just pray for us as we sing this last song together.
God, only you um, can do the work that you want to do in us. And we hand ourselves over now for you to do the work that you alone can do, that only the Holy Spirit can do in us and through this church. So come and have your way. Come and do what only you can do. Come and work in us. Come and work through us.
service. Um, do stay around, like I said. Uh, we'd love to get to know you. And we'll see you for the sixth again next week. And we'll see you for prayers at St. Leo's tomorrow night. <laughs>